Welcome to Controllers Tech. In the previous video, we saw the data coherency issue, and how to resolve it. This video will show an actual working example of what we saw in the previous video. Also we will see how to configure the MPU in the Cube MX. Let me show you the configuration first. Here I have enabled the instruction cache, and the data cache. Other than that, everything is set to default setup. Here I have created two buffers, receive and transmit. And both of them have been assigned a particular location in the memory. Here is the assignment. They are both placed in the SRAM1. I am doing this because the RAM in my case, starts from DTCM region, and it's not cacheable. Therefore the demonstration will not be valid in this region. You can watch the memory management video to understand this. Check it in the Cortex M7 playlist. Let's see the example from the previous video. We talked about two different coherency issues. First, when DMA writes to SRAM and second when DMA reads from SRAM. I am using a memory-to-memory -memory transfer for the DMA. So, first we will write some data to the TX buffer. And then we will use the CPU to copy the data from the TX buffer to the RX buffer. I am using the CPU transfer first. Let's test this part to see if the transfer works in the cacheable region. Here you can see the location of the TX buffer, and the RX buffer. They are just where we have allocated them to be. Here I have put both the buffers in the live expression. So the transfer is working all right. The CPU can copy data around, without any issue. That's why the cases are very specific to DMA. Now instead of mem copy, let's try to use the DMA to transfer this data. Here the source address is the TX buffer, and destination address is RX buffer. 100 milliseconds will be enough to do the transfer. Abort the DMA, so that we can start it again. Alright, let's run it. You can see the TX buffer is updating, but the RX buffer is not changing. This brings us to the issue we discussed in the previous video. Here both these issues are taking place at the same time. Because the DMA is reading from the SRAM, that is TX buffer. And DMA is writing to SRAM, that is RX buffer. Let's start from the solution for the DMA reading from SRAM. Here, after the CPU writes the data to the SRAM, we must perform a cache clean operation, which will flush the cached TX buffer, into the SRAM. 
So after copying the data into the TX buffer, we must clean cache by using clean D cache by address. Let's call the function. Here the address will be the address of the TX buffer, and the size will be the size of the TX buffer. Now let's see for the DMA writing to the SRAM. After the DMA is finished writing, we must invalidate the cache. We can do it in the transfer complete callback. I will just do it here for now. Invalidate D cache by address, the address is the address of the Rx buffer, and the size is the size of the Rx buffer. Let's test it. Alright the first set of data is copied. The second set got copied too. It's working alright now. So whenever we are using multiple masters, we must perform these steps. Before the DMA reads the data, we must perform cache clean. And the invalidate cache must follow, after the DMA writes the data into the SRAM. This was the software solution to maintain coherency. If this seems too much for you, there is another way around it. And I personally prefer using the MPU to solve the coherency issue. So let's see the MPU configuration. First of all, here we will select the third option. MPU region privilege access only, and MPU disabled during hard fault. Now here we have bunch of settings for different regions. There are 16 regions for me, but this might be different for you. We will start with the region 0. Let's enable it. The first parameter is the base address. Here we will put the address of our buffers. The buffers are starting from this particular address. Next is the region size. I have placed the buffers at different locations in the memory. And together they take around 63 bytes of space from the beginning. Note that the buffer size are 10 bytes each, so they take 20 bytes. But since I have kept them at different locations, the region between them is also covered in this 63 bytes. So we will choose the next possible size, and that is 64 bytes. This is the image I showed you in the previous video, and this have the configuration settings for different regions. Here we can choose the region type, that suits best. For example, we can make the memory as the shared device, where we can make it shareable and bufferable. Or we can keep it as normal, but as a non-cacheable memory. I will go with the shareable device type, just to demonstrate that the normal memory can also be made to behave as a device type. So the text field will be zero. Instruction should be disable, as there are no instructions available here. And make it shareable, non-cacheable, and bufferable.
This is as per the requirement mentioned here. Similarly, if you want to set another memory region, you can choose here, and configure it as per the requirement. Now since we have configured the MPU, we don't need this software solutions. Let's just disable them and see if the DMA can handle the transfer. You can see the RX buffer is updating just fine. So the DMA is able to read and write to SRAM, without any issue. I have shown you two different methods to handle the data coherency issues, and you can choose according to your convenience. Just to show you that it is working because of the MPU configuration, let's disable the MPU config, and see what happens. Now the data is not updating in the RX buffer. So configuring the region as a shared device made the DMA transfer possible. This is it for this video. I hope you understood the MPU configuration, data coherency issue, and how to solve it. This is the end for the MPU configuration series. There is one more topic remaining, which is about the sub-regions in the MPU, but we will skip it for now. It's not important, unless you are writing a very complicated program. If required, I will cover it in the future. Since the memory regions are covered, now I will cover some external memories, like SDRAM, Quad SPI, and I will also make videos on Ethernet peripheral. That's it for today. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.